I can't resist showing you this incredible amaryllis. It's got this lovely soft green base and it's as if it's been stippled with crimson pigment. It's just absolutely deliciously beautiful. I completely love it. And what we've got is three bulbs in a pot, which looks so much nicer than a single bulb, I think. And then just this lovely, crazy nest of a willow that we grow lots of here called Nancy Saunders, which um, with the little pussy willows coming out. And so to cheer your life in January, February, and March, what could be nicer? Amaryllis, or Hippiastrum, as is their Latin name, um, are one of those things that um, we associate with Christmas, and you can force them into flower for Christmas. Actually, in the wild, they naturally flower at Easter. So you can have them really in flower in your house from sort of end of November, December, January, February, March, April. And the great thing is, you must store your bulbs. The bigger the bulb, the longer it's going to be throwing out flowering stems. So the key thing with amaryllis is to save your bulbs. Don't bin them when they've gone over. Save them, keep them, um, water them until about June, let them dry off and then bring them into flower the following that autumn. And what you get then is bigger girth, more flower stems and a, usually an extra flower head per stem. So you just get better value every time you store them. And what you've got here, you can just see that these are all planted sort of slightly oddly in a way. They're planted proud of the compost. So the bulb is a quarter or a third above the compost surface. And that's really important because these come from warm places and they rot if you water into here. So you always water into the compost and then allow it to drain out the bottom and then throw that water out. So don't let it sit in standing water because that will rot the bulb very easily. But otherwise, they're incredibly simple to look after. They quite like steady heat like this that you get from a radiator. This where it's sort of, they're in the light, but it's not bright light because that makes them go over quickly. So this shelf in our classroom couldn't be better. In terms of variety, these are my favorites at the moment. I absolutely love this one called Lemon Star which can you see in the throat, it's really lovely and sort of limey, lemony green. So it's got an ivory base and then a green wash over it. And it makes a fabulous cut flower too, which lasts about three weeks in the vase, it really does. And they have a hollow stem. And if you cut them longer, I actually tend to put a bamboo cane up that hollow because the stem, because it's hollow, tends to collapse and crack earlier than the flowers. But honestly, I picked this three weeks ago already and you can see it's just going on and on and on. Um, and so they all make beautiful cut flowers, but I only did that one to be honest, because it collapsed and it broke its stem from a pot. Otherwise, I think it's a bit of a shame to pick them. And then we've got three different reds here of different saturation. So this is the brightest, which is called Royal Velvet. And I'm not so very keen on those sort of pillar box red ones, but this is a corker because it's got enough crimson over it to stop it being pillar box. And it's very tall. Um, so that's why, you know, that's a real beauty. And look, pretty good, at, you know, it's not even supported, it's quite upstanding. This is a shorter one, one tone deeper called Carmen. Uh, shorter, uh, big flowers, um, again, absolutely luscious. And then the darkest of all, which is actually going over now, so it's not looking its best, you can see quite petite, smaller flower heads. And actually, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take the, that off because it's going over and there's another one there at the back. And that's what you do as they go over, you just individually remove the heads. And that one's called Mandela, that's a brand new one. And I love its delicacy, actually. I, I love the fact that it's got the smaller head and I tend to have that like in my bedroom or something. And the other thing that's beautiful about that is that it's got this crimson wash over the leaf and over the bud. And that continues, um, you can see on the stem there, it continues that lovely crimson wash. So I think Mandela is a really lovely new variety that I, I want to watch. And then again, we're just finishing again with Tosca. Um, and so this array has really cheered me up over the winter. And it looks like it's set to cheer me up for another couple of months at least.